whether you are um, joining us live or whether you are um, watching the recorded webinars, um, it's nice to meet you. Uh, my name is Ben. Uh, I'm one of the outreach officers for Ensemble. Uh, and today I'm going to talk to you uh, about the, the webinar series uh, and we're going to think about the comparative genomics analyses uh, that we have uh, and that you can access through Ensemble. So I just want to cover some of the uh, objectives from the webinar series um, that we've been um, carrying out over the last few weeks. Um, hopefully you're all aware of what Ensemble is now uh, and you're beginning to appreciate the power of Ensemble. So we all know it's a, a, a genome browser uh, and we are now beginning to, to progress through Ensemble and thinking about the different types of data that we have. So we've already looked at, for example, the genes and transcripts uh, and the variation data that we have. Uh, and today we're going to think about the comparative genomics analyses. We're also going to think about how we can um, access this data through the Ensemble browser um, itself. Um, so this is one of the, the main focuses of, of the webinar series. Um, but throughout the series as well, we're also going to be think of, thinking about some of the, the tools that we have available uh, to help you uh, process and analyze your own data. Uh, and finally, um, hopefully you've already, already been doing this throughout the webinar series, but we want to show you uh, where to go for help and documentation as well. So this is um, just to show you where today's lecture fits in with the uh, entire browser webinar series. Um, so today I'm going to be talking to you about the comparative genomics analyses that we have uh, in Ensemble. Uh, and next week, uh, I'm also going to come back uh, and talk to you about the regulatory build. So I'm going to show you how uh, in Ensemble um, we try and predict uh, the existence of regulatory features such as promoters and enhancers. Uh, and then Emily's going to come back at the very end um, of the webinar series uh, and wrap up showing you uh, some of the advanced access methods um, for accessing data from Ensemble on a much larger scale. So we've had a very particular structure for each of the webinars. Um, we've normally started with a presentation uh, where we show you what the data or the tool is uh, and how, at least in Ensemble, we produce or process that data. Uh, and then we finish the webinar by giving uh, a short uh, demonstration um, that shows you how to get some of the data um, using the Ensemble Genome Browser. So today's slightly different. We're going to have a presentation and then a demo, uh, and then we're going to go back and have another presentation and finish again with a second demonstration. Uh, and then uh, at the end of the webinar, I'm going to leave you to go and use uh, the EBI training pages to complete some of the exercises that we have uh, that extend some of the principles and, and concepts that we've been thinking about in the webinar. So as always, uh, Emily uh, and Victoria have been uh, joining us today. Uh, to help answer any of the questions that you have about the webinar series, uh, particularly this webinar. So you can ask, ask them questions in the chat box uh, that's in your um, webinar um, software interface. Uh, if you use, if you have a question and you want to ask, then please um, type at and your username first, uh, and then Emily and Victoria can respond in line, uh, as there's no, there's no threading uh, in the chat box. So hopefully um, you're familiar with these pages now, um, but we do have uh, a set of exercises uh, and solutions on the EBI training pages. So the URL for those pages uh, is at the top of this slide. Uh, so you can re-watch the webinar uh, and also download the slides from these pages uh, and then also find the exercises accompanied with their solutions as well. So if you need any help with the exercises um, before next week, then we can help you um, either on our Facebook group um, called Ensemble Online Training Series, which you can join uh, and ask questions, uh, which we'll respond to. Um, or you can email us um, using the help desk, as we've shown before. So that's helpdesk at ensemble.org. So now I'm going to begin with the comparative genomics. I'm going to begin talking about some of the um, analyses that we um, have in Ensemble. Uh, so we're going to think about how the comparative genomics um, can be applied, what's it, what it's useful for, uh, and the species that we perform these um, comparative genomics analyses with in our ensemble. And so we're going to think about a number of different types of analyses. So firstly, we have our gene trees, um, which is produced by um, comparing the gene builds from one species to the next uh, within ensemble. And then we're going to think about how we take these gene trees and make our homology predictions. So um, predicting ortholog and paralog relationships um, to particular genes. 
Uh, and then we're also going to look at the whole genome alignments, um, which come in two flavors. So we have pairwise, which is um, obviously where we have whole genome alignments between um, two um, different species, uh, but then also our multiple whole genome alignments, which is the, the alignments between um, species sets that we have. And finally, we're going to um, think of uh, syntony. So this is um, a concept that maybe some of you have heard of before, some of you maybe not. And um, so we're going to quickly think about what syntony is uh, and then how we can get data um, looking at syntenic regions um, from one chromosome to uh, another between different species. So comparative genomics is a really powerful um, tool and method um, that allows us to understand um, how vertebrates, um, in particular for ensemble, have evolved over time. So we can look at differences uh, in the genome um, from species to species at the genome level. So we can look at individual differences in the sequence uh, and infer um, how that's changed over time. So we can also think about um, how genes have um, gained or, or lost particular functions, for example, um, over time. And we can use we can do that um, looking at through um, homology relationships from gene to gene. Uh, and finally, we can think about the distribution of highly conserved regions. So we can look to see whether there's been any particular constraint um, on the on the drift of um, genetic change of, of the genome over time, uh, and to, to therefore infer whether there are any particularly important regions that haven't changed uh, over a large amount of um, evolutionary time. So within Ensemble uh, and Ensemble Genomes, we perform our comparative analyses by taxa. So we perform our comparative analyses, for example, on all of the species um, in Ensemble, so all of the vertebrates. Uh, and then we also um, perform all of the comparative genomics analyses um, for each of the Ensemble Genomes taxa as well. So we have uh, a Metazoa comparer, a Protis comparer, a Fungi comparer, for example, as well. But we also have um, Pan Taxonomic Comparer. So this is where we take um, a predetermined um, section of the uh, cross-section of the species from each of the different um, taxa within ensemble and ensemble genomes. So we take uh, a, a number of vertebrates, um, a number of different metazoans, um, plants, protists, fungi, uh, but then also a large number of different bacteria. Uh, and we perform our comparative genomics um, on these um, species um, together as well. And you can find um, all of these comparative genomics analyses, um, both the um, taxonomic and the pan-taxonomic comparer, um, through the menu on the left-hand side. So this is a screenshot from the Anopheles gambiae, so the, the vector for malaria. So this is uh, a species that's available uh, within Ensemble Genomes Metazoa. And you can see that we have um, the, taxa, the taxa-specific comparative analyses that you can find there from the metazoan comparer. But beneath that, there are also links for the pan-taxonomic comparer as well. So you can see, for example, there's gene trees and author logs that have been predicted across all of these different taxa as well. So what I wanted to talk to you first about is the gene trees, which is uh, the first type of analysis that we're going to think about today. So our gene trees are produced um, based on protein alignments. So we take a single um, representative protein from each uh, ensemble gene. Uh, and then we perform um, a number of different steps. So we um, perform some clustering and we blast the sequences. Uh, and then we also perform multiple alignments. Uh, and then finally, we reconcile um, these results to the species tree, um, the known species tree that um, has been produced by TreeBest. Uh, and then from this gene tree um, that's produced, we can also then infer ortholog uh, and paralog relationships as well. So taking this last step and um, just extending the idea a little bit further, we, we take our gene trees and we uh, make our homology predictions um, based on the gene tree. So this is obviously a very simplified version um, of a gene tree. Uh, and you can see that we have a number of human, chimpanzee, uh, and a mouse gene as well. So obviously this is a cartoon, um, but it does actually depict um, what you see in the genome browser as well. So you can see these nodes indicate either uh, a speciation event for blue, or a duplication event in red. So you can see that um, from the gene tree, we produced the um, homology predictions. So the first type of homologue 
um, could be an ortholog, which are genes that have emerged through speciation events. So if you look uh, at our gene tree, for example, and compare the gene C1 to H1, uh, the closest route through these two, from one gene to the next, is through this blue speciation node. So this is between two different species, so these are orthologs. Uh, and the same is true for C2 and H2. The other type of homologue uh, is a paralog, uh, and these are genes that have emerged um, through a duplication event. So this would be, for example, um, looking at C1, comparing that to C2. So the closest route that we can draw from one gene to the next is through this red duplication node. So C1 and C2 are paralogs of each other, as are H1 and H2. The homology relationships can also be classified as being either one-to-one -one, um, or one-to-many. So a one-to-one -one relationship is where um, one gene in one species, for example C1, uh, is orthogonous with um, one gene in another species, so in this case H1. Or they can also be one-to-many. So one-to-many is where one gene in one species, for example, the mouse gene, um, is orthogonous to two genes in another species, so in this case, H1 and H2. So now we're going to jump out of the presentation and we're going to have a look at how Ensemble produces the gene trees and how you can get that data on um, through the browser, uh, and also looking at the um, homology relationships as well. So I've just opened up um, a tab in my browser where I've um, navigated to ensemble.org uh, and we want to find uh, in our example um, the, the gene tree for the human BRCA2 gene. So I'm going to search for the human. So I'm going to choose that in my drop down menu uh, and I'm going to search for BRCA2. So here we have a list um, of all of the hits, uh, and at the top you can see we've got the human BRCA2 gene. So we're just going to click on the link here to navigate to the gene tab. Uh, and as you can see, you're probably quite familiar with this page already now. Um, so I want to draw your attention to some of the features in the menu on the left-hand side. So we have a whole section that's dedicated to the comparative genomics that we have there. Uh, and one of those, for example, uh, is the gene tree. So I'm going to click on gene tree. Uh, and I'm going to hide the transcript table just to make the, the view for us a little bit more simple. And if we scroll down, we can begin to see uh, the gene tree that we have for the human BRCA2 gene. So firstly, I want to um, talk to you about the, the gene tree in, in two separate um, instances. So firstly, um, I want to talk to you about the tree on the left-hand side. Um, so we're going to ignore the alignments on the right-hand side for the moment. Uh, so in the tree, you can see um, the human BRCA2 gene is highlighted in red. This is our gene of interest. Uh, and then you can see um, the other ortholog, orthogonous genes from the other species as well. So we have the closely related chimpanzee BRCA2 gene. Uh, and you can see um, further down, you can see the other um, primate um, BRCA2 genes as well. So the species are, are grouped um, and color coordinated. So you can see all of the primates are in this um, gray box. Uh, and then as we move to more distantly related species, um, we have varying colors as well. So we have, uh, for example, the placental mammals um, and the marsupials and um, monotremes are all based within this green box. So this is the mammals box. Uh, and then as we move further away, you can also see that there's reptiles and birds. Um, there's amphibians here. Uh, and then there's also the ray finned fishes uh, at the very bottom. So because we have such a large number of species in Ensemble, um, we've had to collapse some of these nodes, which is depicted by these gray funnels. Um, so if you were, for example, interested um, in the other placental mammals, um, you can click on the funnel itself and choose to expand the subtree from the, the, the pop-up window. So once you've clicked that, you can see that the, the gray the gray funnel is um, removed and you can see what was hidden behind that. So you can see the BRCA2 orthologs from the sloth, armadillo, elephant, hyrax, uh, and then the lesser hedgehog and tenrec. Uh, and you can do this for any of the different um, nodes as well, all in one go. 
So here I've expanded um, the bird uh, and reptiles. So now if we just um, switch our attention and look at the alignments on the right hand side, um, these are the protein alignments that have um, been used to generate the gene tree itself. So what you'll notice um, perhaps first of all is that we have um, different colored um, blocks on the alignment. So what you'll be able to see uh, is where the alignment um, where the alignment corresponds to one of the collapsed funnels. Um, we have this dark green, um, also light green and white alignment. So if we look at the, the legend below, you'll be able to see that the, within these alignments, the white refers to between 0 and 33% aligned sequence, the light green 33 to 66, and the dark green is where um, there's a 66 to 100% alignment um, between all of these species um, and the human BRCA2 gene. Where there is um, uh, single genes, um, you'll be able to see that the alignment is just either the light green or the white. Uh, and this is where there's either an aligned sequence, which is represented by the green blocks, um, or there's a gap in the alignment, which is represented by the white blocks. So if we compare the human and chimpanzee below, you can see that we've got a line sequence here, and yet we have a gap in the alignment here uh, and towards the C terminus of the protein as well here. The black lines um, between the different proteins indicate um, exon intron boundaries. Um, so what you might see, for example, here is that there is uh, a black line that doesn't um, extend all the way from one protein to the other. Uh, and this depicts that there's a, this represents that there's um, not a conserved exon intron boundary, um, for example, here between gorilla and chimpanzee. Um, but if we look at the, the black line to, just to the left of that, there is a conserved exon intron boundary between gorilla and chimpanzee. So the last thing that I'd like to show you on this page is quickly how to download this gene tree. Um, so what you can do is you can click on this um, icon in the blue bar at the top here and it says download data from this image. So if you click that button, um, you'll get a pop-up window that allows you to download this gene tree in a number of different formats. So um, you can download the gene tree in Clostal W, um, Fast A, um, Newick, Ortho XML, Nexus, NHX, lots of different um, tree um, gene tree formats, um, which might be important for different downstream applications. So all you need to do is select the, the format of your choice. So you can click on Clustal W, for example, uh, and then you can either preview the, preview the tree, um, download it, or download a compressed file of the gene tree. So I'm not going to do um, any of that now, um, but this is how you would download uh, the gene tree for your, um, for your own analyses. So the next thing that I want to show you um, are the author logs. So if I scroll back up the page, I'm going to click on orthologs in the menu on the left hand side. Uh, and if we scroll down the page, what we're going to see um, firstly is uh, a table that um, summarizes all of the orthologs for the different species sets. So the primates, the rodents, the placental mammals, for example. Uh, and further down, you can see that we have a table um, that has information about each of the individual orthologs um, of obviously the human BRCA2 gene. Um, for each species within an ensemble. If we scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, you'll be able to see that there are a number of species that haven't got an ortholog prediction um, to the human BRCA2 gene. So you can see these seven species um, do not have uh, a predicted BRCA2 ortholog. So scrolling back up the page, you can see that this table is actually quite large. It's all of the species in ensemble. So what we might want to do is to filter this table, which we can do using um, the summary table at the top. So if we only want to see orthologs from the rodents, for example, we can click um, on this, check this box. Uh, and what that will do is it will filter our table below and only show us orthologs from the rodents. So what I want to do is I just want to focus on one of these orthologs um, now and tell you a little bit of information about it. So we're going to think about the mouse orthologue. So this is obviously the mouse BRCA2 gene, uh, and we're going to think about its relationship to the human BRCA2 gene. So the first thing to notice is that it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So this is where one gene in the mouse uh, is orthogonous with one gene in the human. Uh, on the right-hand side of the table, we have a number of different metrics that compare the mouse and the human 
and BRCA2 orthologs with one another. So firstly, we have the DNDS score, which is uh, a metric that measures um, the genetic drift uh, and the variation um, selection. We also have the target and query ID. So what you can do, if you're not sure of what these mean, you can hover over um, any of the um, headings at the top of the table. So you can see here, for example, that the target percentage ID is the percentage of the orthogonal sequence matching the human sequence. And the query ID is the percentage of the human sequence that matches the sequence of the orthologue. So in this case, 56% matches um, the mouse orthologue. We also have a gene order conservation score, um, a whole genome alignment coverage score, uh, and an indication of whether we have high confidence in this orthologue prediction as well. So what we can do um, is we can you can use the links uh, in the table to navigate to other pages in Ensemble. So you could um, click on the, the stable gene ID for the mouse gene to navigate to the mouse gene tab itself. Um, but you can also click um, on the view sequence alignments, uh, which will give you the option to either view the alignments of the proteins between human and mouse uh, or of the cDNA. So at the moment, I'm going to click on view protein alignment. Uh, and what you'll see here is the clustal W alignment between the mouse uh, and the human BRCA2 proteins. So what you can see here is uh, ENSP, which is the human protein, uh, and then ENS must P, which is the mouse protein, uh, and then obviously the clustal W uh, alignment of those two proteins. So the stars indicating that there's um, the same amino acid in the alignment, uh, and then the other characters depicting uh, the type of amino acid change from one protein to the other. Okay, so that brings me to the end of the first demo. I'm going to quickly jump back into um, the presentation. Uh, and I just want to talk to you now uh, in the second half about the whole genome alignments that we have in Ensemble. So the whole genome alignments, um, again, are really useful uh, and they're, they're good at identifying highly conserved regions. So these highly conserved regions are likely to be sequences that have evolved slowly over time. They're regions that are likely to be functional, um, so they probably uh, are important in um, perhaps embryology or, or any of the um, biological processes. Um, but this can also include both coding and non-coding sequences, so they might be um, genic or non-genic regions, for example. Uh, the whole genome alignments are also quite useful um, in being able to trouble spot um, gene predictions. Uh, and also to define syntenic regions, which is something that we're going to think about at the very end uh, of, the, of the webinar today. So our whole genome alignments come in two different flavors. We've got the, the pairwise uh, and then the multiple whole genome alignments as well. So the pairwise alignments um, are performed using um, last said net, um, and these are between two different species uh, within ensemble. So for example, between human and macaque, between rat and mouse, um, or between the Amazon molly and, and the zebrafish. So you can, we have um, the whole genome alignments between um, different species within ensemble. But then we also have our multiple whole genome alignments. So these are for selected species sets. So firstly, we have um, the Enrido pecan Orthius analysis. Um, so this is a particular um, whole genome alignment um, pipeline um, that is run for the selected set. So we have either, for example, the 11 fish, the seven seropsids, the 40 eutherian mammals, or the eight primates, um, which are depicted here. So um, these pipelines obviously align all of these, all of the genomes from these species um, against one another. Uh, finally, for the, the multiple whole genome alignments, we also have the Myrtle pecan analysis, which is very similar um, to the EPO pipeline, um, but it's run for the 24 um, amniota vertebrates that we have in ensemble, which includes the mammals and the birds. Um, which are obviously much more distantly related um, evolutionarily compared to our species sets. So the Mercator pecan analysis is just more tolerant of the of the differences, uh, the very the much um, greater differences that you'll get between these um, different species. So finally, um, before the second demo, we want to think about um, what synteny is. So this is an idea that I introduced at the very beginning of the webinar. Uh, and basically, synteny um, is when it's, it's a term used to describe when two different um, regions or portions of the genome from one species to the next have um, conserved gene 
um, structure in terms of their proximal relationships to one another. So if we take this very simple um, example here, we have gene A, B and C uh, in the human genome. Uh, and in the mouse genome, we also have genes A, B and C. Uh, and they're in the same order um, relative to one another. So A is upstream of B, which is upstream of C. So some definitions of synteny um, stipulate that the, the genes must also be um, on the same strand. So the, the synteny must have stranded genes. Um, whereas in ensemble, we, in ensemble, we don't have this definition. If the genes are um, at least in the same position approximately to, prox, approximately to one another, um, this is uh, sufficient for, uh, to define the region as syntenic. So now we're going to move on to the next demo. We're going to think about the, the human genomic region uh, on chromosome 2, which contains the HOXD cluster. Uh, so this is a region that's very important uh, in embryology and in development. Uh, and we're going to try and find the alignments uh, and the conservation regions um, from this human region. So I'm currently um, on the orthologs page for the human BRCA2 gene. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is just navigate back to the home page using the, the logo in the top left hand corner. Uh, and I'm going to search for a particular region um, of the human chromosome. So I'm going to select human from the drop down menu uh, and I'm going to search for my region of interest, which is on chromosome 2. And the start coordinate is 176087000. Uh, and my end coordinate is uh, 176202000. Uh, and then I can click go. So now the page is loaded. Um, we're in the region in detail view, which is um, something that you should be familiar with from some of the previous webinars. So if we scroll down, you can see in the one megabase overview, um, you can see the genes um, in this region. Um, you can see all of the HOXD genes, which is, forms the HOXD cluster here. Uh, and if we scroll down, we'll see the region in detail view that we have here. So there are some um, whole genome alignments uh, and comparative analyses tracks that are shown by default. Um, but what we're going to do just first of all is configure this page to show some of the uh, different tracks that we have available. So in the pop-up window, um, we can um, scroll down. And at the very bottom, there's the, um, the subheading um, that links us to all of the comparative genomic tracks that we have available to us. So if we click on comparative genomics, you'll be able to see some of the different um, tracks that we have already turned on um, or that are available to us as well. So the, th the first thing that I want to turn on um, is the conservation score for the 40 eutherian mammals. Uh, and this accompanies also the constrained elements for the, th the 40 eutherian mammals that was turned on um, by default. Uh, and as I scroll down, you can also see that we have uh, a number of different pairwise uh, alignments available to us as well. So obviously we're already in the human region, so we want to um, align um, different species to the human genome. So we're just going to choose a couple of these species, for example, um, to look at. So we're going to turn on the chimpanzee pairwise alignment to human in normal. We're also going to choose um, chicken. Uh, and we'll choose mouse as well. So now I've turned on the tracks that I want, I'm going to save and close the window. So if I look at my region in detail view, you'll be able to see some of the tracks that I had turned on uh, in relation to the, the gene structure in this region. So you can see um, the contig running through the middle. This is the genomic assembly um, with the genes um, on the forward and the reverse strand. So you can see all of the HOXD genes on the forward strand here. Uh, and if we look towards the top, you can see these two different tracks. Um, one was turned on by default, which was this 40-way um, GERP elements. These are the constrained elements. Uh, and then this is with the other track that I turned on, the 40-way GERP scores. 
So this is where the, um, the alignments from the 40 eutherian mammals um, have been used to infer um, the regions that are more or less constrained in terms of their, um, in terms of their evolution over time. So um, the GURP scores are the, is the raw data from the alignment. Um, and you can see that a positive score um, indicates um, that there's a, there's, a constrained, um, there's a constrained element in this region. So it shows us that um, there's a, a less difference from across the 40 eutherian mammals, whereas a negative or zero score, for example, in this region indicates that there is, um, there's not a constrained element. So there's a greater amount of difference between the 40 um, eutherian mammals in our analysis. So using these scores, we've then inferred um, these constrained elements in the track above. So you can see here where the scores are high. Um, we have uh, constrained elements. Uh, and then where the scores are low, um, there are no constrained elements. So this is where there's, um, there's much more difference from, from one species to the next in the, in the, in the set of 40 eutherian mammals. What's quite interesting to notice as well um, is that these constrained elements um, very closely match up with the with the coding regions of the different HOXD genes as well. So you can see the coding exons um, of the HOXD genes a lot of the time line up with the constrained elements. So what you can do, in fact, is you can drag this track further down if you prefer to compare them side by side. So you can see where the, the HOXD genes um, line up with the constrained elements. If we scroll further down the page, you can also see the other tracks that we added. Uh, at the very bottom, we have um, the whole, the pairwise whole genome alignments between mouse and human, chimpanzee and human, uh, and chicken and human. So what we can see here is that the pink um, represents um, uh, an alignment, whereas uh, the white represents a gap in the alignment. So what we can see from this um, depiction here is that the chimpanzee um, is aligned very well to the human. There's only one small um, gap in the alignment here, um, which is obviously very much expected because chimpanzee and humans are very closely related evolutionarily. Um, whereas if we look at the chicken, for example, um, there's, a much, um, there's a much more broken alignment between the human and the chicken region here because um, we have small fragments of aligned region, but then also large regions uh, where there's gaps in the alignment as well. So scrolling back up the page, I just want to show you some of the other um, views that we have for our whole genome alignments in Ensemble. So I'm going to click on alignments text uh, in the menu on the left hand side. So from this page, um, I can choose to align um, the human um, region of interest that I have, the HOXD cluster, um, to any species in Ensemble. So um, what I need to do is I need to select an alignment. So I can click here which will open the species selector. Um, so I want to choose um, a pairwise um, alignment just from one species to the next. You can also choose multiple alignments, but for this example, I'm gonna choose pairwise. Uh, and I want to align it to mouse. So if I'm gonna choose uh, rodents, uh, and then I'm gonna choose mice, uh, and I'm gonna choose the mouse reference here. So by clicking the box, I add the mouse reference um, genome to the um, selected species and I can click apply. Uh, and I get um, my alignment returned to me in this table in two different blocks. So this is something that you might find um, if you're performing your own alignment um, in Ensemble. What you might get is two separate blocks returned to you. So if we take block two um, to, start with, to start with as an example, you can see this is a much smaller alignment. So this is perhaps much more likely to be an artifactual alignment um, that is, um, that's been detected, but it's only 500 base pairs long. Whereas if we look at block one, um, this alignment is over 115,000 base pairs. Um, so this is probably uh, a much more, um, uh, um, uh, an alignment that's worth looking at and investigating. So if we click on block one uh, and scroll down, you can choose to display the full alignment. So what you can do now is you can see the, the, the genome alignment between the human and the mouse genome, which is displayed further down the page here. 
So the last thing that I want, uh, sorry, the next thing I want to show you um, is the region comparison. So this is um, very similar to the alignment, but it's more of a visual representation of what we are seeing here. So if you click on region comparison, um, this page also requires us to select a species. So if we can click select species or regions, uh, and again, instead of perhaps clicking through this time, you can just type your species of interest. So you can type mouse. So I'm going to select mouse from the options and click apply. I'm going to get rid of marmoset, which is there by default, from the selected species on the right-hand side, and click apply. So what I'm going to see now in the top image um, is the comparison um, of the human Fox D cluster um, with the mouse Fox D cluster, which are both on chromosome 2, so chromosome 2 of mouse and chromosome 2 of human. And I just need to wait for the page um, to load further down. So what we can see here um, is the alignment between um, the human Hox D cluster and the mouse Hox D cluster on chromosome 2. So you can see here um, the alignment depicted in the pink, as we would have seen in the region in detail view before. Uh, and this is corresponding to the green here. So the green is where there's an alignment between the two um, genomes. Uh, and then these white regions are where there's gaps in the alignment um, between the two um, species. The blue lines indicate the ortholog relationship, so you can see, for example, here, HOXD8, the human gene, um, has the HOXD8 mouse ortholog here as well. So um, the ortholog pairs um, are joined by the blue lines, uh, and that's shown by default uh, as well. So the last thing that I want to show you um, is in the menu on the left-hand side. It's the syntenic relationships. So I'm going to click on syntony in the menu on the left. Uh, and you can see um, that we have the syntony between the human, chromosome 2, and mouse. So what we have in this image um, is the human chromosome 2 through the middle. Uh, the red box here uh, indicates our region of interest, so this is the HOXD cluster. Uh, and then the colored blocks represent the syntenic um, relationships from the human, G, the human chromosome 2 um, to the mouse. So you can see here these yellow blocks are syntenic blocks um, to, to mouse chromosome 1. The orange um, block here of human chromosome 2 is syntenic with this region of mouse chromosome 6. Uh, and you can match them up for each of the chromosomes as well. So you can see here this purple block that contains our um, red region of interest is syntenic um, with this region of mouse chromosome 2. You can change your species of interest. So we've got mouse by default, which is the one that we're interested in. Um, but you can also choose any of the other species in Ensemble um, if you're interested in the syntony relationships there. Finally, at the bottom of the page, you can see um, the genes from our region of interest and the syntenic um, pair um, for the, for the, the, the syntenic genes um, in the other species as well. So we have our human genes from the HOXD cluster uh, and then obviously the mouse homologs uh, from the HOXD cluster as well. So that actually brings me to uh, the end of the, the demonstration. So I'm just going to quickly wrap up um, the presentation. So I'm going to be back um, next week as well, um, which we're going to is going to be a webinar that focuses on um, the regulatory bill. So we're going to find um, the regulatory features predicted uh, in the Ensemble Genome Browser, uh, and then obviously um, in the course of this next week before I see you again. Um, you've got a chance to have a look at the exercises on the EBI training pages. Um, I'm going to also upload a recording of this webinar uh, and I'm also going to uh, upload the slides as well. So you're able to, to look at those resources as well. Uh, and again, just to, to let you know that we're very um, ready and willing to help you with any questions that you might have. So if you want to ask us any questions in the Facebook group, um, then you're more than welcome to do that or you can email helpdeskensemble.org. Uh, and you can also get some help and documentation um, if you need that as well, um, perhaps when answering the exercises. So um, you can watch lots of different videos on our YouTube channel um, or on our Yuku channel if you're in China. Uh, but you can also um, look at some of the tutorials uh, and online courses that might help you um, from the EBI pages as well. 
So maybe some of you have done this already, but you can um, keep up to date with the Ensemble um, project and the genome browser through following us on social media. So that's Facebook, um, Twitter, at Ensemble, um, or our blog, ensemble.info. Uh, and then if you do um, end up using um, some of the Ensemble resources uh, in any work that you publish, and we'd be really grateful if you could um, cite us as well. It really helps us to understand who's using Ensemble and what for. Uh, and we do actually have um, papers that are specifically related to our comparative genomics resources as well. So if you do use the Compara resources, and then you can even um, cite our Compara paper as well. So this is the uh, Ensemble team. Uh, you'll see all of the um, outreach team, but also uh, everyone else that has put a lot of hard work and effort into generating the resources. Uh, and all of the Compara team that are there as well. So it's those guys who have um, generated all that data um, for your for your um, use as well. Uh, and then finally, um, just to acknowledge um, the list of people, um, there is everyone that you would have seen in the photo, uh, and then also um, the funding as well. So we get lots of um, money that helps us um, keep Ensemble open and free from the Wellcome Trust, Emble, uh, and many other um, projects as well. So we look forward to seeing you next week. Um, I'm just going to move back uh, into uh, the, the webinar software to see if there are any questions. So I think that there, there, have been, there has been some interesting um, conversations, but I think that there aren't any outstanding questions. Um, so I'm just going to finish the webinar now, um, and I look forward to seeing you all next week.